I look back at the fruits of 50 years, brethren, and God says he's made me his apostle. And that's pretty well recognized all through the church. And uh, I, it has not been disputed to my knowledge anywhere. I am not an apostle. I will never claim to be an apostle. And no one in the church of God today should even claim to be an apostle. Yet, there are people in the church of God today that claim that they are God's apostle in this 21st uh, century. They get this preconceived idea in their heads that they, because they are uh, high, highly ranked in the church of God, they feel that they are a, an apostle to the church in this 21st century. Now, many times these people can't prove that they're an apostle. It's just, you know, vanity, their own ego. They stroke their own ego. And because they're in a high position in the Church of God, they feel that they are the successor to Herbert W. Armstrong. We just showed you the clip at the beginning of this program. Herbert Armstrong thought that he was an apostle. And these people now today feel that they are Herbert W. Armstrong's successor, therefore an apostle to the church. Gerald Flurry and David C. Pack, these two guys both claim that they are apostles. They feel that they are Herbert W. Armstrong's successor and therefore an apostle to the church of God. He says here in his co-worker letter, November 8, 2010, he says here, um, we know that this voice actually applies to us, the voice crying out in the wilderness, to the work of God today, to a man speaking out to this world and supported by the members of the Philadelphia Church of God. So here is something I haven't seen specifically before. If you look at this and examine what it's saying, John the Baptist was also a type of our work. He was a type of Mr. Armstrong's work but he was also a type of our work. Mr. Armstrong was an apostle. So if there is someone doing the work of the voice again, is it possible that this man too is an apostle? Of course, speaking of himself. Here, they are both working on the same level, essentially doing the same job, except that we must warn most of God's church as well. Then he says that Armstrong restored all things, he says the voice in Isaiah 40 is actually in two parts or two eras. Of course, they believe in church eras. If you look at it closely, there was the voice of Mr. Armstrong and then our voice crying out to God's sinning church and the world. If the voice preceding ours was an apostle, is it logical, he says, we just want the truth of God, that's all, that the voice following him saying that he is his successor, the voice following him would also be an apostle. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Gerald Flurry is the apostle. He goes on to say, Jesus Christ is about to return to this earth. Isn't it logical to think God would have another apostle crying out to this world before the greatest event to ever occur in the universe? So he feels that he is an apostle to the Church of God and the world. Uh, David C. Pack in the Restored Church of God, he claims the same thing. He says in his sermon, 21st Century Apostle, why would living apostles first not include me? Why would Christ expect me to ignore that? The responsibility Christ expects me to do while I have apostolic authority Mr. Armstrong was an apostle. Yes, brethren, I hold that office as well. He said that in his sermon, in his sermon, the 21st century apostle. And just a quick note, Bob Teal now, I just heard, claims that he is one of the two witnesses. Now, I don't know how he can make such a bold claim, but if he is one of the two witnesses, Let's see him call fire down from heaven or rain plagues on the earth because God says that when he calls these two witnesses, God says, I will give power unto my two witnesses in Revelation the 11th chapter. And when they receive that power, then they are able to rain plagues down on the earth. Let's see Bob Teal do that. 
It never stops in the church of God. These people make these bold claims of apostles and prophets and high priests and all these things. And, of course, I'm, what I'm dealing with in this program is the apostle. We go through this in great detail in our booklet, Does the Role of an Apostle Continue Today? That's the first booklet. The second booklet is on 19-year time cycles. Can you believe Herbert Armstrong made a huge mistake, made a huge mistake with his 19-year time cycle business, and now some of these churches are still perpetuating and trying to fit 19-year time cycles in what's happening today. So we got that booklet as well. And the third booklet, Should Christians Live in Fear? Should you as a Christian live in fear? Should you fear the end times? Should you fear persecution? Well, it's all in this booklet, Should Christians Live in Fear? Absolutely free of charge. All you got to do is log on to our website, BritishIsrael.ca. That's British-Israel.ca, the official homepage of the British Israel Church of God. Now the richest, most powerful group of nations on earth, the United States and British Commonwealth, are part of one of the most mysterious puzzles of all time. The prophecies of the Bible mention such small nations as Libya, Syria, and Ethiopia, but they seem to omit all reference to our peoples. How could such important nations be left out of inspired prophecy? This mysterious puzzle is unraveled in the full-length book, The United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy. This book reveals the true identity of our peoples from the pages of your Bible. And yet it goes beyond past history and shows you what to expect in the future. For your free copy of the United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca for your free download. What is an apostle? There's so much talk about apostles lately, and we read over and over again about apostles. What is an apostle? Well, the definition in the Greek is apostolos, and Strong's the entry uh, 652, and it means a delegate, a messenger, one sent forth with orders, specifically applied to the 12 apostles, but in a broader sense applied to other eminent Christian teachers. And uh, so there are two uh, meanings to the word apostle. Now, in his Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem, he writes the word apostle can be used in a broad or narrow sense. In a broad sense, it just means messenger or pioneer uh, missionary. And uh, there's an example of this. Uh, any person could be sent by the church to the mission field to do a certain uh, project for the church. And this one can be called an apostle in a broad sense. But of course, in we're focusing in here on the more restricted and technical sense of the word of an apostle, meaning the 12 apostles of Christ. This is really what the apostle really is in the more narrow technical sense the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ who had a special commission by Jesus Christ to preach the gospel to the entire world. But there were certain qualifications of being an apostle. And the Bible spells out what the qualifications are for being an apostle of Jesus Christ. Not just in a broad sense of the church sending someone out to do a project, a special missionary project, we're talking here about one being sent by Jesus Christ, personally chosen and picked by Christ and sent to the world with a message. Now, this was done by Jesus Christ to his 12 chosen apostles and, of course, later on, the apostle Paul. But there were qualifications in being an apostle. And what are those qualifications? Well, the first qualification is the apostle had to be an eyewitness of the risen Christ. A second qualification. An apostle had to be specifically selected and commissioned directly by Jesus Christ. A third qualification for being an apostle. The apostles were given the Holy Spirit not only to produce miracles, but also to receive supernatural revelations and prophecies 
that became Scripture. Now, these three qualifications are for one to be an apostle. Does Herbert W. Armstrong and anybody else, do they live up to these qualifications of being an apostle? Well, let's ask the question. Did Herbert W. Armstrong, number one, did he see and observe Jesus Christ in the flesh during his lifetime? Did he see Jesus Christ? Was he a witness to the resurrection of Christ? Well, no. He didn't see Christ. He didn't see the resurrected Christ. And there's a reason for that. Notice what the Apostle Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verses 5 through 8. He says that he, meaning Jesus, was seen by Cephas, then the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as one of, as of one born out of due time. So last of all, what does that mean, last of all? Well, in the Greek, this word in the Strong's is uh, the word last in the Strong's, the entry 2078, and it means last in time or in place, last in a series of places, last in a temporal succession, the last. So in other words, it was the last time they saw Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, in front of them as an eyewitness to the resurrected Christ. Clark's commentary concludes, it seems that it was essential to the character of a primitive apostle that he had seen and conversed with Christ, and it is evident from the history of Saul's conversion, that's in Acts the ninth chapter, that Jesus Christ did appear to him, and he pleaded this ever after as proof of his call to apostleship. And it does not appear that after this time, Jesus ever did make any personal discovery of himself to anyone. So this is the absolute last time that Jesus appeared as a resurrected Christ in front of them. Now, Wayne Grudem, back in his Systematic Theology, he says this was the last appearance of all, that he himself is indeed the least of the apostles, unfit to call, be called an apostle. And then he says that, but the foundational nature of the office of an apostle and the fact that Paul views himself as the last one whom Christ appeared to and appointed as an apostle indicates that this would not happen again. Now, one of the requirements is that uh, one must be a witness to the resurrected Christ. And the Apostle Paul said that this was the last time. He was the last one to see him, and it would never happen again. It is the last time. So, does Herbert W. Armstrong, does he meet the qualifications of an apostle? Well, absolutely not. One must be an eyewitness of his resurrection, which the Bible says would never happen again. So, there are no more apostles in the church. That's a one first crucial and vital qualification of being an apostle. And Christ, the resurrected Christ, would not show himself to anyone ever again. So, Herbert W. Armstrong cannot be an apostle. Was Herbert W. Armstrong, was he a personal witness to the ministry of Jesus? And did he personally witness Christ's sacrifice, resurrection, or ascension? No. Can anybody claim that Herbert W. Armstrong was empowered to perform miracles as a testimony to his apostleship? Were there mir miracles involved, the way the apostles did miracles? No. And the proof of that was that the whole world saw the miracles. It's not a group claiming that this man did miracles. No, these miracles were done among the crowds, and no one can dispute it. No group can say, 
oh yeah, he's an apostle because he did these miracles. No group can claim it. Everybody had to claim it. It was done in front of all to see. Did Herbert W. Armstrong do miracles in front of the general public for all to see? Absolutely not. Well, then he cannot be an apostle. He just doesn't qualify to be an apostle of Almighty God. So, Herbert W. Armstrong is not an apostle. He fails the test, the biblical test. And if he's not an apostle, well then, his so-called successors are not apostles as well. I want you to get this free, these three free booklets, absolutely free of charge. Download them free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. That's British-Israel.ca. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I want it. <laughs> Some little kids sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. Kids are grown now. And, hmm, Sandy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm, is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question. What is the purpose of human life? Download your free copy at BritishIsrael.ca. As I mentioned before the break, that there are no successors. And it's interesting. Everybody wants to be a successor to Herbert W. Armstrong. Yet, when we look into the Bible or in history, after the apostles died, you find that there is no record of the apostles appointing any personal successors. You just don't see it in the Bible. You don't see certain qualifications on one being an, uh, a successor to the apostles. It is just not there. Now, if anybody qualified to be a successor to the Apostle Paul, it would be Timothy. Timothy would have qualified to be a successor, yet the Apostle Paul did not call Timothy an apostle. Rather, the Apostle Paul charged Timothy to retain the standard of sound words. He told him to treasure everything that was entrusted to him. And he told Timothy, and you can find this in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse, uh, uh, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verses 13, 14, and chapter 2, verse 2, to retain all these things which he heard from the Apostle Paul in the presence of many witnesses. In fact, uh, back to Grudem in his uh, Systematic Theology, he writes, Paul's pattern of address in his letters, always, in his letters, always jealousy guards the title Apostle for himself, never allowing it to be applied to Timothy or others of his traveling companions. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he said, and Timothy, our brother. He says in his letters, he says, St. Timothy, as an important role as he had, should not rightly be considered one of the apostles. So, the Apostle Paul took great care in his apostleship because he knew that his, there were certain qualifications needed to be an apostle, and Timothy didn't qualify. He didn't leave him as, as being a successor. And these days, everybody wants to be a successor to Herbert W. Armstrong. And there is no uh, proof in the Bible that the apostles left successors. Or there were qualifications to be a successor to, to, be, uh, to continue the apostleship of the church. Notice what uh, W.L. Hayden writes in his, in his uh, church polity. The apostles had no official successors. From the nature of their duties, there could be no succession. And because of the nature of their duty, the simple fact is that the church didn't need apostles any longer. They were no longer needed. They did their job. They did their duty. Now, what was left? What is next? Now that the apostles are gone, 
What do we have? Well, we have their teachings. We have their teachings in the Bible. And so their authority is still in the church because we have their teachings in the Bible. But what is left? What did the apostles leave the church of God? Well, they left us pastors and teachers and uh, elders and so on. And that's what's left in the church of God. Know what, notice what uh, Hayden writes. He says, Then the extraordinary, the extraordinary, meaning the apostles' ministry, was, uh, which was necessary to found a new institution, was succeeded by the ordinary, which is sufficient to teach, regulate, and govern the subjects of Christ's kingdom according to the laws that went forth from Jerusalem. The revelation of God was completed. The word of faith is henceforth nigh every believer, even in his mouth and in his heart. The apostolic office ceased, and evangelists and pastors became the permanent teachers and superintendents of the church. And that's in Church Polity, pages 33 and 34. The office of an apostle had a specific purpose, to found, to lay the foundations of the church of God. After that office was completed, it was no longer needed, and it was passed on to the ordinary. First the supernatural, and then to the natural. The pastors, the teachers that had the scriptures and taught out of the scriptures the teachings of the apostles, the teachings of Jesus Christ, the teachings of the law, and the prophets. And that's what we have today in the Church of God. Pastors, evangelists, elders, bishops, teachers, and so on. And this is what we have in the Church of God today. So no one can come and claim to be an apostle. It just cannot happen. And we go through all that in these booklets, and we go through Ephesians 4, and 1 Corinthians, and so on, all these scriptures that people try to prove that they're an apostle, and not just in God's church, you see it in the worldly churches as well, you see these guys claiming to be apostles, and they have an apostolic ministry, and are whacking people over on the head, saying you're healed, and rise and walk, and rise and walk, claiming to have the same healing power as the apostles, and they try to use these scriptures in Ephesians, in Ephesians and 1 Corinthians to try to prove that they are an apostle. And it just is not true. 